Hi, I'm Mike Lagos Show. Welcome to the Insider. Today we're talking about 40 years of the John M. Husband Center. Here to talk about that, none other than the longtime voice of the Utes, Bill Marcroft. And Bill, you called games this venue for most of its existence. You were here when it was built in the 60s. When they built the facility, what was the thing that really prompted this to get done? Well, actually, I started doing the games in 66, you know, as the color man, and we were in the Iron Nicholson Fieldhouse. When I became voice of the Utes, 1969, First game in this building, December 1st, 1969. And that was the most memorable game. That was Kenny Gardner and, and Mike Newland. And Newland has a game high 33 points in the game. He hits 23 of 25 foul shots, missed those first two, and then made 23 in a row, a record that stands today. But they just needed a bigger building. Because yeah. the students wanted to get in. They only 500 students could get into the games. <laughs> and basketball was king here on campus. Well, it's amazing. It's really become a side of championships. The 79 Final Four was here with Bird and Magic. Uh, countless NCAA first, second round games. Gymnastics has held nine national championships here. When they built this facility, was that part of the idea that had this become really a venue for championships in Salt Lake City? I think that it was in the back of their minds. But mainly because this building was paid by student fees. Students had to vote and they decided they would pay fees to get a building was to get students in to see it. Then it just amplified. But the building was built as a multi-use building. Acoustics are beautiful in here, which you don't find in the pit or anywhere else. No. Or the Marriott Center where it's just a, <laughs> a barn. But in here you can have Ness, you can have Pavarotti, you can yeah. have uh, Bill Cosby, the first act in here. And as you said, we have had the greatest uh, attendance for women's athletics in the history of all women's athletics. 15,552 for gymnastics this year for the Georgia meet in this building. Well, Bill, you call so many games in this venue over the years. You've been to so many events here. As you look back over four years of the Huntsman Center, what are some of your best memories of events you've been to, things you've seen here in this building? Well, one of the wasn't even a Utah game. It just had a couple of Utah players there, but the Utah All-Stars played the Russian national team. First time Russia ever came out of the Soviet Union. They played uh, an All-Star team in New York, beat them. All-Star team in Indiana beat them. All-Star team in Kentucky beat them. Came here, and on our All-Star team, uh, uh, Mike Newland was on the team. This was in uh, 1970, and we had All-Stars from Weber State, Willie Sojourner from BYU, and from Utah State, Nate Williams, Natalie Williams' dad. They played the Soviet Union national team here, their Olympic team, and beat them. Well, Bill, how about some Utah games you attended? Utah games, when we had a, a team that had seven NBA players playing. We had, for Utah, it was Danny Vrains and, uh, and Tom Chambers and Pace Mannion. For BYU, it was Danny Ainge and Greg Kite and uh, Fred Roberts and Trumbo, who all played. You had seven guys who played in the NBA, played pro ball, played in that one game. It was a magnificent game in here, and Utah won the game. How about that? Well, that's fitting the way it should have uh, played out that afternoon. We're <laughs> celebrating 40 years of the Huntsman Center on February 27th when Utah hosts Wyoming for men's basketball. Bill Markoff will MC and also narrate a special video. Come out and see us. That's for this edition of Utah Insider. For Bill Markoff, I'm Mike Lyshill. Thanks for joining us. So long, everybody. Go Utes!